you know, when you think um, Western, you know, Western way is like, I own my land, you know, I, I own this break versus, you know, in a Hawaiian way of thinking, it's a living entity. The ocean is, the land is, and we're more stewards of the land, stewards of the ocean or caretakers, you know, of that. And, and that's always been that symbiotic relationship that we've always carried. And it's been taught for generations of how we, we should carry ourselves and how we should treat our nature and our resource you know i remember growing up it's like we would hear on big swell and we would be like okay let's eat early and let's sleep early because i want to wake up early i want to get out there you know so that was the the fun and joy and then it was also enjoy watching your friend get one of the heaviest waves you know rather than you know it's like i caught the best ride we just had such a joy of someone else had the best ride That was Brian K. Alana. I'm Jamie Brissick. You're listening to Soundings, brought to you by The Surfer's Journal. The Surfer's Journal is a reader-supported publication made possible by sponsorship from Birdwell, FCS, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, Bisla, and Yeti. More book than magazine, it delivers 120 pages of independent storytelling in each issue, covering the people, culture, travel, and art of surfing. Members receive the magazine six times yearly, in addition to unlimited access to the magazine's archives, discounts in its store, plus subscriber-only access to additional digital content, exclusive film screenings, and sponsor offers. To subscribe, please visit surfersjournal.com. Brian K. Alana is a well-known Hawaiian surfer, lifeguard, and waterman. He played himself in Baywatch, Hawaii, and has provided invaluable support as a stunt coordinator in dozens of major motion pictures. He has extensive experience for water stunts. I met Brian many, many years ago. I was close friends with Brock and Clark Little on the North Shore. He was friends with the Kealanas, and they were charging big waves at a very young age. So Brian grew up in Makaha, which is, in, to my mind, kind of the soul of Hawaii. This conversation takes place on the beach. You will hear ambient sounds, kids playing in the shore break. Interestingly, Buzzy Trent's son, Ivan, passed by in the middle of the conversation and uh, gave a, a nod to Brian. So, here we go. Brian, welcome to the show. Right on. Mahalo. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, so we're sitting here at Makaha. We're looking out to a pretty solid swell. And I would imagine you've spent a lot of time right here. Oh, yeah. And this is my Studio C right here in Makaha Beach. What was it like growing up here? Oh, God. You know, I'm looking over to where I grew up in the middle of the beach. They, um, we used to have A-frame house right in the middle of Macaw Beach. And my dad was um, designated the first um, park keeper here at Macaw when Macaw became an actual park. And uh, they built that A-frame house for the park keeper with the restrooms on the side you know, just to take it apart. But um, needless to say, my dad... You know, was a great park keeper, but he actually, there was no lifeguards back then here. So he rescued everybody, you know, and saved everybody. So throughout the years of being a park keeper and being here 24-7, he saved countless of lives and ended up, you know, um, all those people just kept calling the politicians and saying, you should hire this guy. And, you know, my, my father, he didn't have, you know, any um, what we call Western schooling, really, you know, only on a certain age. But I, you know, consider my dad a professor of Mother Nature, you know, a professor of the ocean. He has so much sea sense, you know. There's a lot of people talk about common sense. My father has a lot of sea sense, you know. So, and he's passed that down not through to, um, not only his culture or his kids uh, and his relatives, but the whole community. I mean, when you come to the West Side, Makaha is a, is a village, you mm -hmm. know, and, mm -hmm. and everyone knows everyone here. Everyone helps everyone, everyone feeds everyone, everyone watches over everyone. And it's the way the world should be, really. You know, and, and it's funny, when I go to the North Shore, I love North Shore, but it's just a, a different sense, you know, when I, when I see things. And, um, I, you know, my, my legacy of life has always been share what my parents have given me and share that not just with, um, 
you know the people in Hawaiian Islands, but with the rest of the world, and and that's the reason why I said, you know, we're not divided by land, but we're connected by water. We all ocean families, you know, no mm -hmm. matter where we come from, because wherever I travel, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, I feel at home, and once I'm in the ocean. Yep, yep, yep. For so, some of our listeners may not know who your father is. So Buffa, Buffalo Kealana, can you tell me like what how, what was your dad's upbringing like, and how did he sort of come to surfing? Oh God, my father, yeah, Buffalo Kealana. You know, my dad's a pure Hawaiian, and he he really had a hard life. You know, um, he had to fend for himself and survive. Um, you know, went hungry, homeless, all that stuff. Um, but again, the ocean is what really kind of um, taught him about you know just living and enjoying life. And my dad was one of the pioneer surfers, uh, along with you know when I was growing up, I really never know who was my real blood uncle. You know, because I had Uncle George Downing. Uncle Buzzy Trent, Uncle Greg No, you know, and all, all these pioneer surfers, they all came to Makaha. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, this is the place. You know, Makaha was the place that everybody came to. So, you know, again, you know, it, it, my, my father was one of those pioneer surfers back, back in the days. And not just only in Makaha, but in Haleiwa and especially in Waikiki. So, you know, my dad you know hung around with duke kanamoku and rabbit kekai and you know all that and stuff also too and then he also sailed um the polynesian hawaiian canoe hokulea um first time navigating only by the stars and just reconnecting with our culture and our past of you know again you know the the ocean is our, our freeway our highway and and not only gave us um life but uh you know sustenance and living and you know and just traveling you know so and, and surfing you know because for us in Macau you know surfing doesn't stop of surfing a short board or surfing a long board surfing is really about how much you enjoy in the water you know no matter what that craft is you know it, it's um I tell people you know don't put a label on me you know because it's not about what I'm labeled it's my contents you know what what's my content you know all the kids and all the people here we can body surf and body board and long board and wind surf and kite surf and hydrofoil but there's a time and place for everything you know so when the conditions say it's now then that's the craft we're gonna play with uh-huh uh -huh. how old were you when you started getting in the water oh god so um my dad took me out when i was three months old and and how i remember that is you know i i don't remember it but i hear my mom saying she was uh upstairs in an a-frame house and it was kind of like this kind of light right now I, I would say you know where the, the light is kind of shining on the water and kind of blinding where my mom looking into the the sunset and a tourist was on the beach and saying look at that dark man with that uh, that really light baby that's out in those giant waves and then she looked out and seen a silhouette of a guy surfing with a baby and she was yelling down to my dad hey honey look there's a there's a nut out there with a kid you know and then no answer came back and she ran downstairs and looked up in the rafters when my dad put his surfboard the board's gone and looked at the silhouette and noticed that was him with me and she was screaming and yelling and you know <laughs> so he caught a couple of waves and he came in and she would give him all kind of words and stuff but that was all my you know induction to the first time but all of us my um i have two brothers and two sisters you know uh one being you know rusty Kelana, yep. road champion long border but he, you know, all of us could swim before we could walk. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking here at Macaw is, you know, this really was our, our school, our playground, our church. You know, my father would like play with us in a shore break. He would jump in a rip with us guys and get caught in the rip and get blown out and teach us how to come out of the rip. But, you know, again, it, it was an area that we were comfortable, yeah. you know, in, just in, in everything, in undertoes and impact zones and, you know, knowing where the, the reefs are and all that kind of stuff. Were you in the water pretty much every day? Oh, man, when I was a kid, yeah. yeah. It was probably a day that we weren't, you yeah. know, out of the water. And growing up in a place like this, did you feel the desire to go travel and, and surf other waves, or were you really happy being here? Yeah, you know, like any kid growing up, you know, all I wanted to do was travel, you know, and, and all I saw here was here, Macaw. Uh, my, my introduction to the North Shore was really through Rella's son. Uh -huh. Rella was like my older sister, really. So she took me to Haleiwa the first time when I was, you know, a kid and surfed there. And then, you know, as we all get into, you know, teenagers and stuff too, started just surfing 
all around the island and you know all over the place as soon as we can and started competing in competitions and did really well and you know all i wanted to do was you know be on on you know surfer magazine and travel the world and you know get sponsored and all that live the dream you know yep and and i and i did and i did my my thing but i also found out early on that life was just much more you know and um my dad kind of forced me into the life-saving world really you know it was just uh, an easy thing for us guys you know to do yep you know and, and just learning from my my dad you know about life-saving it was was an art in itself and what age did you become a lifeguard? Oh God, um, some higher, maybe fourteen. Mm -hmm. You and, know, and you were working the, the towers here at Makaha. Yeah, it was more like a, a, a summer job as a lifeguard aide back then. You know, where you kind of assist the, the lifeguards and you know just fall in more like an internship kind of thing back then. Um, so that, and then slightly working in some of the pools and you know learn a lot about pool lifeguarding and then. Um, got into just summer hire with the city and you know it was a I would say you know a, a, a pastime just you know extra money that you make and you can lifeguard and surf you know for me and just you know he started enjoying the the beach lifestyle not just you know surfing but just being vigilant and and again you know it's an art in lifeguarding you know because it is a not a payoff in in monetary but the payoff in in making a difference in someone's life you yeah know? It, saving someone's kid or their mom or their grandma is the most one of the most gratifying things you can ever do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so your work in as a, well you're surfing and your work as a lifeguard has kind of expanded into an entirely new career for you right yeah you know i really not you know foreseeing where you know i was back then to where i'm not right now i mean my life has been so fruitful and successful that I have the opportunity to share the fruits of you know my my earnings. Um, you know I, I work in the film industry full time now, but when I first got in, um, that was one thing my dad always taught us guys was never be afraid of any kind of work, whether you dig in a hole, patching a roof, or you know going out lifeguarding, whatever it is, just you know do something and earn something. You know, and and um, you know both me and uh, you know, it's like my Hanai brother or adopted brother Melvin Poo. Uh, my father and my mom raised them with me, so we would go out and just work all these odd jobs all all over the place. But we ended up um, doing like modeling and and dabbling in some acting stuff. So that's kind of how I got involved in the film industry. Okay, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then from there, you know, as you start going, you start learning all about filming and meeting, you know, guys like Don King and Mike Prickett and all these, you know. Uh, people around the world and, and then getting involved in all you know the big features and things like that and meeting all the top um, stunt people around the world women and men you know and uh, just being involved it's like going to school all over again you know yep, yep. yeah what were the films that were the kind of breakthrough ones where you where you realized you had I mean I, I know you did sort of water safety but you also did a lot of stunts too right yeah I would say majority of stunts more than water safety but water safety is just hand in hand in, in the stunt world it's really about you know, doing stunts and safety is is both. You know, you can't do a, a safe stunt, you know, well planned out. You know, we design our dangers, control our chaos, and, you know, uh, evaluate all our perimeters. So it's really like lifeguarding, you yeah. know, at a, at a whole extreme level. And, of course, you know, water is just a, a no-brainer for us guys. But um, we surround ourselves with the best, you know, stunt car drivers or the best, you know, uh, skydivers you know the best fight guys the best fire guys you know so we all learn from one another so in the stunt industry it's it's really small you know so you know when people mention you know a certain name we know exactly it's kind of like the genealogy where they came from and all that kind of stuff too so yeah you know as tight as my surfing world or water road is i think my uh, film world or stunt world is even tighter what would be the most heavy duty stunt that you've done describe that oh god it's so much you know to um think about it's like asking me what was the heaviest wave you took you know uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> there's a bunch of them you know i mean i can talk about things in in water world um pearl harbor um are your, mid midway are you all, know. all your stunts in the water or do you do other stuff as oh well? no i i do a lot of driving stunts okay uh, look, look at this am i looking i'm looking at Buzzy Trent's son, Ivan Trent. 
That's fantastic. <laughs> Makaha. Yes, Makaha. Yeah. Um, and so, what is when when you're not a, when you're not off working? What is a day like at home here in Makaha? Oh man, you know I'm I'm juggling every show in town. So right now I'm working full time on NCIS Hawaii as a uh, water you know stunt safety coordinator from for that show. Um, but I also help out Magnum PI and you know the stunt coordinator on that is Eric Norris, is Chuck Norris's son. Okay. Um, uh, I just finished uh, Aquaman 2 with my cousin Jason Momoa, you know, so that and stuff. And then I, we got commercials um, that we're doing all this week. It, it's, you know, it's a, it's a thing we've been juggling. And even um, I just finished a pilot uh, called Kinui Road with John Wells. And it's really um, well written because it's a local boy, Matt Kesta, who is a Kuku boy made well. You know, with John Wells, who's a, a unbelievable director um, from me, like ER and all, all these kind of shows that he's done. And uh, I ended up um, being one of the producers and second unit director on the show, too. Uh -huh. You know, so that was a great opportunity, you know, in that. And it's all about uh, Hawaiian lifeguards. Okay. The whole show, you know, on the not show. So it, it's, you know, a great uh, pilot and, you know, hopefully to be on series. You must have never imagined that you'd be doing Hollywood work when you were growing up here. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, again, I think I love the the art of the storytelling. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Hawaiians are great storytellers, but, you know, getting involved in, in that field has always, again, been just uh, fun. The creativity, the, mm. the uh, communication between different people you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the education between cultures and all that kind of stuff and and that's been really fun telling stories yeah so who were your heroes growing up oh god my biggest heroes was you know again my mom and dad really but you know it it was always my my heroes was george downing and buzzy trent and greg Knoll and you know when i was a small kid over here we, i would see giant waves and these guys, they never have leashes, you know, the boards, they wipe out and they body surf these waves in. And you wouldn't see an out of shape surfer yeah. or a, a surfer that can't, you know, not, not just can't swim, but phenomenal surfer, yep. you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. Who are your heroes now? Uh, Ivan Trent is one of my heroes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's the legacy, right? You know, that, that, I think that's the thing. So when you talk about families, uh, I, I just love, you know, like the Moniz family, right? Yep. You know, yep. Tony and then, you know, all the kids and, and that legacy and that generations or, you know, like the Icaos and, you know, the Napoleons. So when you get into the, the, the families of the next generations and it's it's great, you know, just um, seeing that being passed on, you know, that, that passion, that love, you know, just still still feeling life as it was before yep 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 what about having traveled to you know other countries other states in the u.s and and being seeing other surf scenes when you think about you know you've been to biritz i think you yeah. uh, you've been to australia what when you go to those other places what does it make you think of uh, like how is makaha different to these places oh you know it, it's it's funny because i feel like we appreciate it around the world more than we are appreciated at our own home you know because when we go you know to other countries i mean what places erect the, uh statues of on hawaiian like dukan and moku around the world you know uh, I, and then they really love um our, our culture but you know the hawaiian culture has always been about the aloha spirit is being inclusive not exclusive you know, we're not waving on flag and saying that, hey, we're the greatest. I mean, we look for great people and we try to compete at that great level, you know. And, and, and if we um, falter or fear and, and we get beaten, we just got beaten by some of the greatest people. And it's a joy in itself because it gives us room to grow, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to become better. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, I grew up in Los Angeles and I, and I surfed Malibu as a kid. I started coming over here in my teens. I stayed with Brock and Clark Little up yeah. Pupukea Heights. And, and I kept coming every winter, you know, chase big waves and surf contests and, and whatnot. But the thing that was so um, 
different to me compared to where I grew up yeah. is in my high school years when all my peers were trying to go to like parties in the Hollywood Hills and, and, and kind of try to climb up the, the ladder, um, you know, with work and stuff like that. There was such a down home, you know, there was a big value on family and then humility and respect were yeah. so important in yeah. the culture here. Yeah. And I, I always look back on it and go, I'm really grateful for that time because it kind of grounded me in a way that my, a lot of my peers were like doing line, lines in Hollywood Hills mansions with, you know, models and what have you. And they, they went a different path. Yeah. Um, but if you were to try to describe kind of what the Hawaiian lifestyle is like, what would you say? Oh, man, you know, we, you know, I, I tell people the thinking Western and thinking Hawaiian is two separate entities because, you know, when you think um, Western in a Western way is like, I own my land, you know, I, I own this, you know, break versus, you know, in a Hawaiian way of thinking, you know, we, it's a living entity. The ocean is, the land is, and we're more stewards of the land, stewards of the ocean or caretakers, you know, of that. And, and that's always been that symbiotic relationship that we've always carried. And it's been taught for generations of how we, we should carry ourselves and how we should treat, you know, uh, our, our nature and our resource, you know, those kind of things. I mean, you know, I remember growing up, it's like, we we would heal on big swell and we would be like okay let's eat early and let's sleep early because i want to wake up early i want to get out there you know so that was the the fun and joy and then it was also enjoy watching your friend get one of the heaviest waves you know rather than you know it's like i caught the best ride we just had such a joy of someone else had the best ride you know so it it's a it's a different way of i i guess thinking and not so much claiming uh -huh. you know so yep. I, I i think that's the thing we, we claiming was almost a a foreign thing for us guys yes you know because it's it wasn't about the claim is more about sharing no and i really felt that too i mean it, I, I learned from my trips here not being boastful yeah. was not a good thing at all yeah. i mean being humble was what was yeah. very important and that's how you sort of survive yeah especially for a howley like me yeah. um when you get out in the water these days, what do you ride? What do, what what sort of equipment? What what keeps you stoked in the water? Oh, you know, I, I, I think what get me most stoked is just sharing the more like you know we started off um, brag right big wave risk assessment group with Cole and Danilo and Pat Chung Tim, um, and and it's really uh, went viral around the world. Like I've seen communities grow like Mavericks where uh, you know the first time i went to mavericks and uh i asked the whole group there the first time who cpr certified and a few hands kind of got rose up and then the last trip i went up and i asked the same question in that whole auditorium of who's certifying cpr 100 percent raised their hand and i was blown away and the communication now and the camaraderie i mean that a lot of spirit like i said you know from the being that well grounded into the, the the you know value of the ocean community right um you just see that family atmosphere now grow yeah and not just in mavericks but um you know tahiti um new zealand uh, australia mm -hmm. i mean even australia i i always give thanks to australia for being our forefathers in life saving mm -hmm. because a lot of our life saving skills really came from australia also too yeah but it's a hybrid because we also understand back when duke was surfing and he made all his life-saving um, skills and brought you know the thing back from California and to here and you know I consider what we do like a hybrid because I think everybody who's great come to Hawaii yep and I think we receptive the way we um, open enough to kind of absorb and learn you know mm -hmm. like I'm still learning you know yeah yep. I, I have a lot to teach but I'm still learning yep. a lot of new stuff yeah so you know when you talk about crafts I mean I don't know, you know, I, we play with Subsquatch. It's a giant inflatable, you know, 17 foot surfboard that we put seven people on top and catch big waves and, you know, just have on blast. And, you know, I'll, I'll take the ski out or we go hydrofoiling or canoe surfing. But, you know, again, it's just about, I don't know, it's, it's not about the equipment sometimes, it's about who I'm spending my time with. Yeah. You're listening to Soundings with Jamie Brissick. 
This podcast and the Surface Journal are made possible due to TSJ's subscribing members and through the sponsorship of Birdwell, FCS, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, Visla, and Yeti. To learn more about the Surface Journal and its sponsors, or to subscribe, visit surfacejournal.com. Now back to our guest, Brian K. Alana. Let's say there was a, you know, a production here and there was a big wave scene and you were waiting for a big day to shoot it. What, you, you would sort of oversee where to put everyone? Like, how, how does that work? Yeah, so it depends, right? Um, what the atmosphere, what we're trying to shoot. So a lot of the times, you know, we don't um, try to kick people out of the water, you know, and have like the exclusivity out in that lineup. But what I'll do is I'll hire probably the, the local guys in that area that catch most of the waves. And I'll ask them, all I want you to do is actually catch more waves. But when I need my stunt person or the actor to catch a wave, just kick out. You know, so it's kind of like giving back to that yep. community. Yep. You know, so that's kind of how we work. But, you know, again, I, I use Bruce Please, you know, um, surf forecaster from... Um, it's who George Downing used before. He's on Kauai, and he's pretty good of, of you know, forecasting what's coming on. And, uh, you know, we try to educate the production about, you know, what's the best way of shooting this. Because, you know, it is sometimes. It's better to shoot either in the morning or in the evening because of the wind yeah. that may come up, you know. But the lighting is another thing. So, you know, there's balances between what we're going to shoot and how we're going to shoot. And that's the great thing about now being a... A director for the you know second unit because now I control a lot of what we shoot you know and how we shoot that mm -hmm. so it becomes a lot more um, I would say less educational because you know we I not I not um, trying to educate someone or, or having someone ask questions you know I'm hiring people who already have the answers yeah and we kind of like already blending of you know what to do when to do things like you know me and Don King make a perfect team but you know with me and Don King and Terry Ahui and Melvin Puhu, you know, and all these kind of guys to just, you know, having their support and seeing things ready. Like, you know, I mean, like you, right? We we see things out in the water before it even happens. Yeah, sure. You know? Yeah. So, so it's having that kind of sense. Yep. Any heavy situations you've had in the water doing water safety? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> got, any, got any stories? <laughs> There's so much stories. I mean, I... I got a guy trapped in a sea cave and went inside and grabbed the guy. It took two and a half hours. Um, someone filmed that. Um, just recently, um, we had uh, Melvin's contest. And, uh, you know, the waves was really big and close intervals and all that kind of stuff. And I got, I got whacked inside of the impact zone, in, inside of, it's, you know, Macaw can be like Waimea shore break, basically like that. And the undertow is really rough and and you know i got to the point where i almost blacked out wow you know and then i had to be rescued myself and you know um wally frostite's uh, uh grandson who was a lifeguard he ended up grabbing me and bringing me up you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so you know it's things like that but um you know like life is the it's it's all about you know you're only as in greatest shape as the last time you went out. Yeah. You know, it's the consistency of how you train. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you do training, specific training, or you just, just do your stuff in the water? I used to a lot, especially when I was surfing the eddy, you know, because, you know, that dedication where, you know, breath holding and, and training. And it, it's, it's funny because throughout the years, I've been invited to almost every single eddy. And um, there was one year that um, I, I just told myself everyone out there is a great surfers anybody could win the, the event what makes me different than everybody else and that year when I started training I said everybody gonna train for surf I gonna train for the wipeouts so I started with you know me and Melvin tossing myself over the falls getting rolled getting wow. winning the impact doing breath holding but you know it, it's a balance between lifeguards where I would do that and have the lifeguards come in swoop, swoop in it's like on rescue yeah so i helping them with their skills but i'm helping myself out and and just that became such a normal world of of just the chaos inside of heavy water mm -hmm. when i ended up surfing waimea you know it was like oh it was just just easy and comfortable and you know just i didn't you know it, it wasn't um i don't know you know when you talk to big wave surfers as you know 
fear is on different things. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's um, I don't know how you would phrase that because to me it's not really fear because we never let our emotions control our actions. Yeah, you know what I mean. We we see things and it's more that I don't know. It, I would say enlightenment or um, bliss because you know when you out in the in the water, you don't think, you just react and you you kind of become like part of the ocean because if you think I'm gonna do this, it's too late. Yes. You know. You, yeah. You just have to be um, reactive and responsive and just be instinctive of yeah. what to do. Yeah. yeah. When you were throwing yourself over the falls on purpose, was were you a stuntman already? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you were that, training for the job as it, well. It, it is, and I think being a stuntman also gave me the, I, I guess, the next level of thinking. Uh huh. You know, because um, it made me think more out of the box. So I, I think you know what, what really made me who I was, who I am today, it wasn't just my dad and lifeguarding, but um, uh, being involved with the best stunt people around the world. But also, I, I took a course with the uh, Army Safety Center, the military in um, risk management and and that gave me the the details of really defining of what I was up against and and just you know I mean breaking things down into details yeah you know in, into like um, I would teach now uh, green zones yellow zones red zones you know green being safe yellow being cautious red being the most dangerous and not only that but judging waves in percentage of power to where any wave can be 100% of impact, whether it's three feet or 20 feet, but you take that percentage off point of impact, and then you start degrading from that energy as it comes in. So like, you know, now when I teach militaries or, or any anybody elite out in the water, how to kind of, you know, take on what you your ability can take, rather than take on 100%, I'll, back off and take 60% of that energy. Yep. You know, knowing where to be or knowing where the zones where the ocean energy will back off. Yep. You know, and and there's so much of those zones. I think people get, you know, blinded by fear yep. and they just run. And if you sort of break it down, you almost get scientific with it, right? Oh, big time scientific. I mean, yeah. I can get into the, the the physics of the ocean or yeah. the, you know, the salinity of the water can be one thing. I mean, the the depth of the water you know energy you can rate you know yeah. currents and flow and hydraulics and all that kind of stuff but you know before i remember a comment where i had a um you know uh, i had this girl I was dating and and the father was you know telling the the daughter like why are you dating on surfer they, they they all you know bums they're not educated but you know i look at surfers nowadays it's like you know they they're eating healthy they they're training they looking at at all the details, like you know. Now we teach people about um, EAPs, emergency action plans, or um, spot analysis, where we talk about entries and exits. Where do you enter from? Where do you exit from? What is the timing of it? You know, what's the tides like? And then we get so much into the the detail of things. Um, it almost reflects me back into. I remember because I used to love surfing pipeline, and um, I used to just be amazed watching. Um, Jerry Lopez and Rory Russell where they would come down and they would just like grab their balls and they would sit on the shoreline and, and just watch the waves how much waves in a set what's the timing like what's the lows between you know what's the tide coming up later on and there was no internet back then you know yep. and then you know just watching them like dancing out in the water and nowadays you know it's almost too much information where the kids look at the, the, the live camera feeds and they look at the buoy reports and it's like, okay, they make their judgment and then they paddle out and then they start lining up on other people out in the lineup. Like Waimea, I was out at Waimea the other day with my daughter doing on Red Bull shoot and I would see what I call paddle panic, you know, and in the crowd, it's like cattle. One person panics and paddle and that energy just feeds and everybody's just paddling off the, you know, off the boil to where they, they, they should be and they paddle away from the lineup, you know? It's gotten not a lot more crowded on the North Shore oh since you were growing up. Oh my God. How, do you, um, do you, does that frustrate you or you, or you navigate it well? <sighs> I, you know, I, I, I find myself not going because of the crowd. I, I find myself like, you know, if I go in the ocean, I want to enjoy not, um, not being going elbow to elbow, you know, that, that kind of stuff. It, it's just, 
you know, it's different down here on the west side. Everybody still has that respect that if they see you going for a wave, they'll they'll back off and go for something else. Uh huh. You know, whereas you know over there, everybody's competing. Yeah. You know, for that same wave. Yep. Yeah. And, the, and there's the kind of glory hounds as well over there. They're looking to uh, make their careers. Yeah. So you know, and I, and I look at that and I see in the water, um, everybody's there for their own value, sense of value. You know, whether they um, trying to you know build their um you know likeness or you know uh, whatever yep. instagram or yep. any kind of yep. stuff that you know um, recognition you know um some people doing them because of the the sponsorships you know or photos um you know and, and I, I love the guys that just out there just for the soul of just to be out and enjoy but um there's becoming a fine few of those nowadays. I noticed that. Yeah. I mean, and I think that those people still exist, but they probably are not surfing those main spots anymore. They're not surfing the main spots. Yeah. Um, they they come in around, and I've talked to some of them, you know, before. Like I, I used to enjoy going out. Like um, you know, Macaw is my place, but when I was training for Waimea, I used to love going out with like Roger Erickson and and watching him, and you know, and and seeing him and stuff also too. And and and, and the quietness sometimes the. Um, you know, because I enjoy watching people the the study of, of nature, the study of the ocean. You know, and they're just looking and and seeing that horizon or the indicators. Because not everybody understands. Like you know, here comes the set. Or we have thirty seconds to be in the right place. You know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you still ride big waves just for enjoyment? Um, I I think I enjoy big waves more because of my kids. So I kind of like sacrifice my time. You know, more with. Uh, just trying to be out there, you know, maybe with the skiers. And my daughter loves taking photography and she's really good. And then my son's charging big waves and my nephews. So I kind of like, you know, right now just bring my ski on and just be that supportive role. Yeah. You know, how old are your kids? Oh, man, my daughter is 29. My bo boy is 27. Yeah. And how old are you? I just made 60. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how has Makaha changed since when you were a five-year-old kid playing oh, in the water out here? Makaha, God, Makaha has changed a lot. You know, back back in the days, my father, he 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 ran the beach like like a, a village, like a family. They, there was like thirty to forty beach boys that come every day, and and whether they surf or if it was flat, my dad would go dive and feed the whole beach, and uh, you know. Some boys would go up in the mountain and hunt and go and cut wood and and then play music. And, you know, it, it was on, God, you know, it's such a golden time in my life. I, I also, you know, after I grew up and had to raise my family, my kids, and I had a decision whether to go to California and, you know, buy a big house and get new cars and, you know, put the kids through education and, and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it, it also... I looked back in my past and said, do I really want to deny my kids the the lifestyle I've grown up with, you know, not being around um, the grandparents or, the, you know, my, my, my family. And I told my wife, I said, ah, I'll, I'll just make the trip over to, you know, California to work rather than be there. And, and I did for years, you know, worked up mainland. But um, my kids, you know, appreciate really how they, their upbringing and how they came out. And I'm proud, you know, my my boy graduated from Kamehameha Schools and he became, um, he went to UH and became an engineer in college. So, you know, stoked about that. And they both work in the film industry with me, uh -huh. um, doing stunts. My boy like rigging, my girl does, you know, stunts when, you know, I, I feel like it's in their wheelhouse that they can, you know, do them. And they, you know, again, their uncles is some of the greatest stuntmen that teach them to, you yeah. know, about fighting and falling and driving and all that kind of stuff too. How is the West Side Makaha lifestyle different to other parts of Oahu? Oh man, uh, you know, it, if it wasn't for the lifestyle in Makaha, I probably would move, but traffic is horrendous down here and it's a sacrifice just to come back into this, right? I mean, when you look outside and you see the just pristine water, I mean, it was brown and then now it's coming green already fast. Um, it, it's 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 different, right? You know, because um, we don't have as much, I would say, uh, 
tourism as the rest of the islands. Yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. feel that way at all. It, it, we have, but there's still some, you know, a lot of the families come down to the beach. Uh -huh. You know, so I, I think that's the thing that I don't see so much on the North Shore other than maybe like Haleiwa, you know, seeing a lot more uh, families and stuff that, you know, enjoy the the beach and the picnics and, you know, the kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, I, I listen to a bunch of different music, you know. I, I love Hawaiian music, but, um, you know, I I went to um, Austin, Texas, and I appreciate the, the music there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's kind of neat because I like those kind of uh, indie music also too. Yep. Um, you know, Jack Johnson, I knew Jack forever, uh -huh. and the, the, the parents also too, you know, when we used to go to Pipeline, and... Um, you know, I, I just remember Jack singing all these songs and, and you know, we, we we just was amazed when he made out and the rest of the world appreciated Jack. We yeah. just was blown away. He went yeah. big. He oh, went he went so big. big. And, and, and that's the thing, too. I'm so proud of, you know, of, of Jack and stuff also, too, and, and their whole family. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like even, you know, like Hawaiian family. I consider Jack and his family Hawaiians, really. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Born and raised here. Even like John John, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That, then guys too, you know, Nathan, Ivan, all all them, you know? That's the thing. They're, they're born and bred here. Yeah. You know? So their roots is here. Yeah. I've been doing this for 20 years now, but whenever I arrive, I get my rental car and I immediately put it on the Hawaiian music station oh, yeah? and I listen the whole yeah, time. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> and there's a lot of geography too. You know, I'll be in Waianae yeah, yeah, and I'll yeah, be yeah. in parts of the island, yeah, other, yeah, outer, yeah. outer islands. Yeah. Um, so, Brian, I think I got most of this stuff, but is there anything that you, that I we didn't talk about that you want to talk about? Um, I, you know, other than I, I think one of the big things for me is like uh, my surfing life has been big. My movie life has been big. Uh, my life-saving life has been in the professional realm um, great, but, you know, I, I, I see um, such a growth in the surfing industry of people making more of an effort of, of being more educated in life-saving. And it's neat because I, I think if you ask any surfer, have you ever rescued or assisted someone in the surf, raise their hand. And majority of people would. If they don't, they just started surfing. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can go up to Kelly Slater and you can ask Kelly, have you ever helped someone? I guarantee you Kelly gets stories. Yes. You can ask John John. You can ask Carissa. So, you know, it's, to me, you know, it's not really about me. It's about us. It's about everybody all in the ocean. Is how can we fulfill our legacy in, in, you know, what we enjoy and how can we make this a safer place for all of us? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, thanks so much, Brian. Right on, Jimmy. Yeah. Soundings is produced by me, Jamie Brissick, and Jonathan Shiflett. You can find it on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Our theme song is Ocean Parkway by the Gun Trusinski Duo. You can find more of their music on Spotify. Soundings is brought to you by The Surfer's Journal, a reader-supported publication made possible by sponsorship from Birdwell, FCS, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, Visla, and Yeti. The Surfer's Journal is published six times a year. Along with the magazine, subscribers receive unlimited access to every article from its 30-year archive, as well as members-only access to additional digital content, exclusive film screenings, and sponsor offers. For more information, visit surfersjournal.com. Thanks again for listening to Soundings, and we will see you again. Mm -hmm.